Hello, my name is Klaus Eckelt and I'm a PhD student and doctoral researcher at Johannes Kepler University Linz in Austria. It's my pleasure to talk about the work that I've done together with my colleagues over the past year about the representation and visual exploration of relationships and structure in low dimensional embeddings. Let's take the Palmas penguin dataset as an example. It consists of penguins of three different species that live on three Antarctic islands. And for these penguins, several body measurements and the sex was recorded. This embedding is based on body measurements, and we can color code the points by species to see whether the penguins are different, which is the case. But how are they different? By their weight, their size, the island they are on? Let's encode the penguin's island by shape. We could also do it by color, but then we lose the information of the species, so we have to add additional encodings to the marks to get more information out of the embedding. But encoding options are limited as well and quickly get overwhelming for the users. So to better support the exploration of groups in embeddings, we first of all thought about how to represent structure in embeddings. To represent groups, we use diamond symbols that are rendered on top of the marks. Here, I create a group for each species using a lasso selection. The diamond is placed at the center of the group's points in the embedding. And to explore the structures, we also create summary visualizations as seen on the left, which give an overview over the high dimensional data. There are also some outliers in the orange group for which I have created a separate subgroup. These outliers are part of the penguin group in orange, and we can make this relationship explicit by drawing an edge to it. This exploration of structures was also the initial motivation for our work, having groups and subgroups defined by certain features in the data, like species or island of the penguins, and analyze if and how they differ, first on a high level in the embedding space, and then in detail by the high dimensional data. There are many different structures and relationships that can occur in data, and in terms of structure, we support single items as you have it in standard scatter plots and groups of items, which can be defined based on user selection, for example, in a previous analysis step, or with a lasso selection in a scatter plot as we just did. Groups can also be defined density based by applying clustering algorithms to the scatter plot, or they can be created based on the high dimensional data, grouping items of the same category or with similar numerical values. We can already see here that the relationship between groups and items are also important, as some of the pink dots are quite near the group of green points. The relationships between groups are represented by directed edges and can be extended to arbitrary depths, allowing a definition of hierarchies and also graphs. When there is data that changes over time, we also support item and group sequences, and I will get to that in a few moments. First, I want to show you how we represent the relationships between items and groups. They are shown on demand by selecting either an item or a group. Let's start with an item first. If one or multiple items are selected, we connect them to all groups they belong to. And the group is also highlighted. If we select a group instead, then we connect all items that belong to the group. And as the group's diamond is the center of all points in the scatter plot, this typically results in a star-like pattern, and we have therefore named it star visualization. Here we also have an alternative visualization, the contour plot, especially when hierarchies are defined where items belong to multiple groups. The star visualization can lead to overplotting, and we think distribution differences in the embedding are also better visible using the contour plot. Next, I would like to demonstrate our approach with one of the use cases we have in our paper. This use case analyzes 450 professional chess games, and each game consists of a sequence of game states that are connected by lines. Similar game sequences can be grouped into group sequences, as we did here for the opening moves of the white and black player. The large cluster on the right side is the start of the games. We can see three large bundles going out that correspond to different game openings by the white player. 
Hovering over items or selecting them via a group or lasso selection shows the summon visualization and we see that the white player starts the game with the king side knight in a sucker toward opening. In the embedding we can also see multiple clusters occurring later in the game. We select the groups of the corresponding clusters and open the comparison pane to analyze them in more detail. The comparison side pane shows summary visualizations for the selected groups in the first column and a difference visualization in the second column. The summary visualizations give an overview over all game states in the respective groups. For each chessboard square, the most frequent piece is shown and the opacity encodes the frequency of that piece. In all of the groups, castling is used by both players to protect the king. Castling is also the only move in chess where two pieces, the knight and the rook, can be moved simultaneously. The second column highlights the differences between the groups. In the first group, a bishop is in front of the king, while in group B, a pawn takes this position. This change is reflected in a difference visualization showing the respective square in dark blue together with a pawn. Smaller changes on the chessboard are shown with light blue squares. In the third group, games were opened with queen's pawn opening more often and the black player therefore had to move the queenside pawn as well. In the paper we discuss multiple summary and difference visualizations. For today's use case, we use the domain-specific summary and difference visualization for chess that shows the chessboard state for individual items and groups. The generic visualization for high-dimensional data was used for the penguin groups at the beginning. The summary visualization shows the distribution of categorically and numerical features with bar charts and density plots, while the difference visualization also uses bar charts to show the categories and uses box plots for the numerical data. As the embeddings can be based on hundreds or even thousands of attributes, we rank them in the summary and difference visualization. Attributes in the summary visualization are ranked by the normalized standard deviation to quickly identify the most and least varying attributes inside a group. The difference visualization ranks the attributes by the difference between the, between the groups. And there is also a threshold shoulder in the top right corner to hide minor changes. There is also an example for Rubik's Cube in the paper and my colleague Christina Hummer explored the, the maximum common substructure of chemical compounds and analyzed machine learning models that are applied to them. The approach I have presented is integrated in the Projection Space Explorer web application. The website linked on this slide lists all domains and datasets we applied it to. There you can also find the online tool where you can upload your own data or try one of the examples I have presented and it is also available as an open source library on GitHub. Currently we are also working on creating groups and group sequences more automated, for example to find the most common moves between two chess game states. And we are trying to further improve the group comparison. The high dimensional difference visualization currently ranks the attributes by the difference between the groups. So combinatorial effects of attributes that might just separate the groups even better are not considered. And we are looking into how to best detect and present differences based on attribute combinations. I would like to thank our partners and invite you to check out the paper and the application via the QR code and link on this slide. I can't answer questions in this recorded version, but my contact details are on the slide and I'm happy to discuss ideas or questions online or at the conference. Thank you.